Hey y'all, it is Monday afternoon. I'm sitting out in the natural area and it's a really nice day. It's like 70 degrees outside and the birds are chirping, the sky's blue, and I had jury duty today, but the judge cleared his entire docket for the day and let us all go. So that was quite the surprise. So I thought I would take y'all out here with me this afternoon and show y'all a little of what's been going on in the landscape over the past few weeks. About three weeks ago, I called in my friend, John, who is a horticulturist and a landscape designer. So he came in and he's been working here with me for about the last three weeks. And it's been really great. So in this video, I wanted to show y'all some of the areas that we have changed and tackled and added things to, and I hope that y'all will enjoy it. Let me give you a little bit of a reference. So this is the back of my home. It is west facing, and we live on a golf course, which is right behind me. And in the middle of the golf course and our backyard is a natural area that is half of it's about through the halfway point of the natural area is about where our property stops and so we share this area with the golf course and it's been a challenge really to figure out what i wanted to do in this area i get a lot of shade and dappled sun so we're using a lot of Japanese maples. We're using a lot of hydrangeas, oak leaf hydrangeas and original endless summer hydrangeas. There's a Tamukiyama Japanese maple right there. There's a long drift of hydrangeas here facing the golf course. And then some of the plants that you see were already in the landscape, like these four bridal wreath spirea. There's another one over there. Plus these camellias, which bloom white. So there were, and you know, also obviously a ton of pines, which I love. And the pines give a really nice dappled shade, dappled sun effect. So underneath this tree, here, which is a wild cherry. I actually love heuchera. I think it is the most amazing little plant. And if you aren't familiar with heuchera, you need to be because it is a wonderful part shade loving uh, plant. It's, it's a small grower. I think that they mostly get about 12 inches or so tall and the biggest I've seen that uh, is 24 inches wide and so they're really nice. They've got a lot of different varieties. In this particular bed here under the wild cherry tree, John and I have put a big bed of heuchera all around. And Within this large planting of heuchera, I have several different varieties. So I'll talk to y'all about these varieties. Like every week when I look out here, new leaves have come onto these plants and I'm, I like have a new favorite one every week. This one right here, look at all the multiple colors that are in this one plant. You've got green, you've got a more like rusty natural color You've got the new growth that is an orangey red. And then on the underside of the leaves, it's an awesome fuchsia color. I just can't get enough of this plant. Now, the ones in the back of the tree are the bigger growers. And then the ones that are along the grass line are the smaller growers. The smaller growers in the front get six inches tall and about 12 inches wide. And then as you move your way up, they increase to about, the tallest one's gonna get about 12 inches tall and 24 inches wide. So they will eventually grow together and become just a very neat, colorful ground cover underneath this wild cherry tree. 
they get probably about four hours of sun a day, which is what they require. It's a couple hours in the morning, a little bit of dappled sun in the afternoon, and then in the late afternoon when the sun's going down over the golf course, they get some afternoon sun. So this variety right here, it is called Carnival Watermelon. Carnival Watermelon. And I have five of these. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, now in this next grouping of five is called Carnival Black Olive. You see the undersides of these leaves also have that great color. The new growth does anyway. And this actually has a more leathery texture on the front of the top of the leaf. A lot of them have that kind of peachy, peach fuzz texture, but these are more of like a leathery hunter green color and a really pretty pink backside of the leaf. And the new growth comes out this really pretty sort of uh, brownish green color and it matures to this darker green and I just love it. It's, it's very pretty. Okay, now we have five of those. Now we're moving on to my absolute favorite. This is called Peach Parfait. Peach Parfait. You guys, I traveled down to Tallahassee to the Tallahassee Nursery um, that's been around for a hundred years, I believe, that nursery has. Also, I went to a local nursery in Dothan, a couple of local nurseries in Dothan, and really just collected a lot of cool varieties of heuchera. Now, see how neat this is? It's got silver veining on the older growth, and then the new growth comes out uh, sort of a pinky color with some silver also veining and then the underside of the leaf is that great pink so when the sun hits these the peach parfait in the late afternoon y'all it lights these leaves up and they become this intense hot pink color so so pretty now i have four in a line right here in front of this bird it's actually a bird fountain. They come and they sit on it and they drink from it. They don't really bathe in it. So it's not really a bird bath. Okay, so these are called cracked ice. And it sounds like something that you would buy on the street, but that's the name. And it has these little leaves, little veining, sort of silvery green. And then they come out kind of like a pinky color. So that's pretty, it's a pretty green. It's not as intense though as some. Now, over here, we have one called Silver Lord. Silver Lord gets about six inches tall, 12 inches wide. And it is also part of the Carnival series. And there are a number of the Silver Lord. They have a purple leaf and the new growth comes out. Let's see, purple, and then it ages to this green. Okay. And then I had some of these at my old house. And unfortunately I didn't bring them over. So I had to go buy some new because these are really, really fun. So this is called Carnival. No, I'm sorry. This is called Caramel. And you can see why it's called Caramel because it's got that great like caramel color leaf with an underside of pink. And these looked awful when we put them in the ground because I'm by, I bought them really late in the season. So all the leaves looked basically like that but I put a little bit of fertilizer on them and we've been watering them and they're planted in the ground now and so they have all this really pretty new growth and it's so exciting so I just have a grouping of three of those 
and this one's coming out with some new leaves also. So caramel might be just like my all-time favorite, but the peach parfait is coming in a real close second. All right, so for the final variety that we have here up under the tree, Lord Lime. And it is just a really nice pop of that chartreuse green that every garden really needs. It brightens up this area a lot. And it's just a very pretty color. Look at that, y'all. Wow. That, this is all new growth. Super pretty. Okay, so then one thing that we did actually was we planted an expanse, like a drift of heuchera all along the border of the grass line here. We have four heuchera that are called the Georgia peach. This is the Georgia peach variety. And then there are sort of, let's see, a mix of one called, uh, several called Amber Lady and Northern Exposure Red. We've got to talk about my most exciting thing that we have done. And this was all credit to John. He suggested that we use a lot of native rhododendron and so actually it was a brilliant idea because this is the perfect spot for some native azaleas and it's also kind of like channeling the augusta national beautiful golf hole that has all the azaleas that everybody knows you've probably seen it whether you're a golfer or not so because we do live on the golf course i thought it would be just really cool and appropriate to try and channel that here in the back natural area. So let me tell you some of the varieties. This one is called Dancing Rabbit and it will be a yellow orange. Okay, now the Dancing Rabbit will get six feet tall and four feet wide. So it is of the smaller growers here that we have we have some that get about eight feet tall to 10 feet tall and probably about 10 feet wide planted in the back near to the golf course. Um, and so anyway, what we did was we arranged them in, in a way that when they get full size to full maturity, they will all be kind of grown together in one large, beautiful mass of color. And as you can see, the native azalea is deciduous. So the leaves fall off in the winter and in the springtime they'll bloom out and then they'll get their foliage back. So this is an Andrew J. Boyke. It is a yellow orange. It gets six feet tall, four feet wide. Then right here, we have a sunny side up. That one's a beautiful vivid bright yellow. Now, as these bloom, I will be trimming them back so that we can force some growth on the bottom so that these things will get fat and beautiful. It just may take me a little time. Now, this one right here is called Great Balls of Fire. It is a gorgeous orange, like deep, rich orange. It gets six to 10 feet tall, four to six feet wide. You've got the structure of the boxwoods and then sort of the wild, playful nature of the azaleas. And I think it just makes an awesome garden combo. Here, more in the middle, we have a Florida flame azalea, four kings. I have a Verity weeping Japanese maple here in the background, in the foreground here, I planted a blood good yesterday, no, the day before, and I had brought this one over from the other house. Then over here we have 
another native azalea called magenta rose hot pink i went up to milton georgia it's right by alpharetta georgia my dad and i took a day trip up there not long ago and i snagged three of these this is called lee's deep purple rhododendron i'm sorry lee's dark purple rhododendron look at this look at that okay lee's dark purple rhododendron and it's got pink in the center of the bloom and it gets six to eight feet wide six feet tall so this will be a nice big mass of color every year And then a few more azaleas. So I hope this gives you kind of a comprehensive idea of some of the things that are going on and that we're deciding for this natural area. And I'm not ashamed to say that sometimes you just got to get help and you got to have somebody who has a lot of knowledge about plants, first of all, but someone who also can help you see outside the box. And that's exactly what I needed. And I couldn't be more excited and I can't wait for next spring. So truly gardening is an exercise in patience because I just need to slow my roll. But I think it's gonna be beautiful and I'm so excited about it. So I hope you guys are too and I appreciate y'all coming along with me this afternoon on our little garden tour. Hope you all are doing well and have a great week.